The Sepik River, one of the largest in Papua New Guinea. It rises in the country's western highlands and flows through the heart of the East Sepik province. The lagoon shores are home to many people who rely on the waterways for communication, transport and food. Even in its more modern aspects, the whole fabric of Sepik life revolves around the river. Then, in just a few brief years, something happened that tore that fabric apart. It was a plant that lived in the water. At first, it was just a nuisance. Soon, it became a menace, clogging water intakes and fouling the propellers of outboard motors. All too quickly, it became a disaster. This is Selvinia. It's not a flowering plant, but a water fern. But let it loose, and it's the stuff of nightmares. Here, the Selvinia was a meter thick and could support a man's weight. This is Selvinia infestation at its worst, a seemingly impossible situation. Scientists had sought Selvinia's native range for a decade and failed. Then in 1979, during a routine survey of a quiet river in southern Brazil, that search came to an end. The weed was very restricted, living on quiet backwaters. Three insects were found living on it, a moth, a grasshopper, and a small black weevil. Careful tests confirmed the weevil attacked only Selvinia. It would die rather than eat anything else. It had perfect credentials for a biological control agent. The weevils themselves were holding the weed in check. If the Selvinia multiplies, so do the weevils, causing it to decline. The weevils have no choice but to follow. This is biological control at its most perfect, a marriage between the host and its natural enemy that neither can dissolve. No further human intervention is needed. The solution is permanent. Dr. Peter Room of CSIRO's Division of Entomology made the first release of the weevils on Lake Mundara, the main water supply for the inland city of Mount Isa. The results were dramatic. The local villagers showed a keen interest in Peter's previous successes. This is Lake Mundara before we put the beetles on, and you can see that there's a very solid cover of salvinia there. And then this is the same shot as the first one, about 11 months afterwards, and you can see the same hills there. It was decided to give the weevils a try. Returning to Australia, Peter Room went weevil collecting. Room would take only a few hundred insects with him, a mere thimbleful and one of the most unusual forms of foreign aid ever to leave Australia. Room arrived at Weewak Airport, carrying a biological revolution in his briefcase. Have you brought your beetles with you? Yep, they're all in here. Good. The weevil's life cycle begins with adults feeding on new Sylvania buds above the water's surface. Aided by air bubbles sticking to their bodies, the weevils lay eggs on submerged stems. The larvae hatch and further damage the plant by boring through the stems and eating more buds. The larvae then pupate before emerging as new weevils to repeat the cycle. And so, in February 1982, 600 pinhead-sized weevils were given the task of destroying some 250 square kilometers of weed. The picture changed dramatically. It was as if a fuse had been lit. The weevil population exploded. The Weewak radio station broadcast the good news and asked villagers to collect weevil infested weed and take it back to their weed infested lagoons. As quickly as it was disrupted in the late 1970s, life on the Sepik is returning to normal.
The lagoons and lakes will never be completely free of Selvinia, but the weed should no longer be a problem. By the end of the decade, the world's worst water weed will once more be relegated into obscurity.